Let me adjust my old man lower back pillow and my lumbar pillow <laughs> and my memory foam couch cushion. Welcome in, everybody, to the Craft Beer Republic. Thanks for drinking. Thanks for joining. I am Greg, and I'm being joined by the best-looking guy just outside of Milwaukee, and that's Flex. What's up, buddy? Oh, my gosh. I needed that today. You are looking fucking on it. Like, the hairs, like, the sexy indifference kind of waviness. This is a head hair today. No, this is like, I didn't try, but secretly I tried. That's crazy. I, I literally took my head off. <laughs> That's what I did. And I, and I always have a thing for librarian glasses, so. Oh. Boner. Well, now I'm on cloud nine. <laughs> cloud Ooh. 69. Cloud from six to midnight. <laughs> but hey, not a boner show. <laughs> <laughs> not, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> it usually becomes one. <laughs> Anyways, sorry, everybody that hasn't turned this off yet. Uh, thanks again for drinking and joining. Find us on the socials at Craft Beer Republic and of course Flex Me a Beer underscores in between. Uh, all that good stuff. We have a lot to get to today. We got a voicemail from the homie Beer Girl Melissa. Oh, I was I was really gonna say chew. I thought you would. I checked out a new brewery. We got some booze news to get to and uh, so much more. So if you guys don't mind, I'm gonna crack into some beverage over here. Yes. Uh, I think I talked about this a couple weeks ago. I hung out with Andrew, a.k.a. Ventura County Beer, underscores, on the gram. And he hooked up with a few beers for me from around the area. And this is another one of them. This one, instead of for Made West, he gave me two Made West and two Casa Agrias. So I am drinking, thanks to Andrew, Citra Traveler from Casa Agria. This is a West Coast Pilsner. Of course, has tons of Citra in it. It is 5.5%, no listed IBUs, and has a 398 on untapped. The can says, Citra Traveler is our all-Citra West Coast Pilsner, and it's all about expressing one of the most beautiful hops ever. That packs a big mango, guava, and pineapple punch with hints of dank berry. Hook up the trailer, fill up the ice chest, and hit the road with Citra Traveler. We sniff in here. Yeah, what do, we, what do we got on the aromatics? Uh, mostly that dankness, a lot of pine coming in, a little bit of berry. I, I get a little berry, maybe like raspberry in there, okay. but mostly dank. And the fact that I can pick anything out is good. I, I don't have the best sniffer in the world, but here's the important part. Ye old tongue jobber. Get it. All right. I love a good West Coast Pilsner, and this is a good West Coast Pilsner. <laughs> Uh, I don't get tons of mango or guava for that matter. I'm getting more pineapple and more of that berry again. Uh, very fruit, fruity, uh, but not juicy, you know, like a, a hazy or like the new right, like New Zealand right. hops or anything. But you get a lot of that fruit, a lot of dank on the finish, and it is ever so pilsnery clear as it should be. That is very nice looking. And uh, very clean and very light and very fucking chuggable like this is not going to last long you know um, can i tell you uh, those you can fruity notes when they hit on pilsners they they just they hit so much different yeah they really do i just had an italian pilsner the other day and i was like oh this is you know it's classic it's italian pilsner nothing, nothing special nothing wrong it's good it's exactly what it's supposed to be right H- handed it over to the wife and i was like what do you think she's like it's too hoppy <laughs> so they like, are yeah, yes like what I did not find it hoppy, but you know, oh, really? I'm also, yeah, I'm also a hop whore, so maybe Sometimes I'm desensitized. I, I find with the Italian pilsners that they are a more ho- or a, they are a hoppier pilsner. Mm. Well, she would tell you it was, and I would disagree. But like I said, hop whore, so uh, my tongue is probably just shot to shit. So who knows? But this is good. I I taste it all in here. This is crushable and light, a little fruity, the right amount of dank you would expect from Citra. I mean, we've had so many classic IPAs with Citro. I think we'd pretty right. much know what it tastes like yeah, at this we'd point. Yeah, have a uh, very good idea. Yeah, but very good. I, I love Casa. We all know that. I'm 
bit of a horror for Casa Agria. And I mean, I, I've had some of their stuff, and they're really good. No, I've, I haven't had a single thing from there that I was like, "Yeah, that was all right." Right. Yeah. Everything's yeah, good. Their, their stuff is really good. Um, and you love West Coast Pilsners. I do, and it's so fucking hot here in Southern California right now. My phone keeps telling me there's weather advisories. Yeah, which, I like. Did. I just saw somebody post something about the weather in California and you're looking at yeah. a couple hundred degree days in a row. Yeah. Wow. I mean like hundred degrees in certain parts of the area, not a big deal. It's normal, but like right. where I'm at, you know, that's, that's pretty fucking hot. So yeah, I'd um, say that's hot anywhere you are. I don't right. care if you're California, <laughs> yeah. Arizona, Wisconsin, Massachusetts. Right, but when you move like, to the desert, like you got to know it's coming. Well, yeah, but a hundred degrees is a hundred degrees no matter yeah. where you are. Fucking balls out here. So, uh, Hot as balls. This is quenching the thirst. Thanks to Andrew once again. Andrew was going to hang with us, but some uh, COVID things came up, so uh, that didn't get to happen. Maybe we'll work something out where he can hang out with us. Excuse me, hang out with us and share some beers and, and all that good shit. He's a good guy, so and he likes good beer, obviously. So there you go. Uh, remember a couple weeks ago we were talking about taco guys, and you were like, "Hey, does everybody in California just does have every, a taco yes. guy? Does everybody?" <laughs> well, listener Andrew hit us up. And uh, he said, hey, I'm currently listening to the podcast. Pretty sure I'm going to become the taco guy in my neighborhood. He moved out to the Midwest <laughs> as well. So, you know, he's he's the only guy out there from California that knows what's up. And so pretty sure I'm going to become the taco guy in my neighborhood. And uh, we, it was also the show where we talked about expensive beers. And he goes, or excuse me, cheaper beers at airports. I guess it was expensive beers. So the beer prices at airports. A, yeah, it was expensive beers at airports. Yeah, that's what it was. Because he goes, I believe your list. I spent fifteen dollars on a Gordon Biersch Hef at the Detroit airport. <laughs> I was like, oh, yikes. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, thanks to Andrew for for writing in there. Uh, also, I tried a new brewery last weekend. Okay. I feel like my my research at new breweries has been lacking as of late. First of all, I mean, I've had everything in the area; nothing new is popping up. But um, we were back up in Paso as <laughs> per usual doing the old wakeboarding thing and uh, there's a brewery Wake and wine wait yeah this time though had some beers okay paso robles brewing company i think they opened last year we just hadn't made it over there honestly like from the looks of things it looked like a hometown bj's <laughs> you know you guys have bj's out there right actually the we just recently got one okay and we went and, like a month ago and did you like uh, finish your story. Okay. I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to ruin your story <laughs> with a, a bad BJ. Uh. <laughs> no one wants to ruin anything with a bad BJ. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we sort of just were, were not in a huge hurry to try it out, but we, we finally were like, you know what? In fact, we were going to go to a different brewery and we had Marty the Brew Pub with us and we showed up and we're like, oh yeah, no dogs allowed. I was like, at a fucking brewery? What is wrong with you? So we yeah, were like, right, fuck you, we're leaving. So we went here and they have food at Paso Rose Brewing. They're like, oh yeah, dogs, no, no problem. Come on in. So, um, had, had a few of their beers. And in fact, we had like half of their, well, more than half their menu. We just got two flights, which was like eight of 10 of their beers and, um, pretty like their lager was real good. I liked their hazy. Uh, what else did I like? There was a few in there that were like really good. And I was pleasantly surprised. I ended up getting a pint of the hazy afterwards. Like I was like, this nice. is actually really solid hazy. Uh, the wife really liked the lager. The Pilsner was good. So, um, yeah, pleasantly surprised. It was a good time. So, if you're so you, you know you really like a beer when you get a full pour after the flight. Right. Yeah. Because it, it, I talked, you know, a few weeks ago about that place we went to. I didn't even finish the flight, let alone order a beer afterwards. Which is crazy. Yeah. We won't mention names. But so anyways, this time I ordered a beer afterwards and I quite enjoyed it. So uh, cheers to Paso Robles Brewing Company. Heck yeah. How was the food? Did you get the food? We had some snacks. We had, what did they call them? Like pork or rib something like rib tots or had some cutesy name. Basically it was like ribs, but like they'd cut most of the bone off. So it was like a little snack size ribby thing. Okay. You know? yeah, it was good. It was exactly what we expected it to be. Uh, my sister got, uh, Hey, did you know my sister got married? What? Yeah. She was, that's her, crazy. Yeah. She got some food. I think she got like a salad or something. And so anyways, um, yeah, yeah, it was good. We didn't have a ton, but you know, it was good what we had. Cool. Well, it's good. Yeah. Because even decent food at a brewery is going to bring me back. True. You know, especially if the beer's good. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, so you want to hear about, about your my, sloppy BJ. I mean, <laughs> truthfully, not a horrible time. Um, my wife had heard about this place and she's like, oh, she always tries to like reel me in by like, being like, oh, hey, there's beer here or it's right. a brew house or a brew pub. And, it's kind of like when people um, were trying to get me to watch Game of Thrones. 
And they were like, oh, they're like, oh, boobs. Boobs. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I got the internet, fucker. Yeah. That's crazy, right? Yeah. They're oh, everywhere. Boobs. That's all. Uh, huh? So I was like, yeah, we're like, we'll go. We'll try it out. I have no problem trying out a new place. I, we pulled up. I assumed it's franchise. Just oh, yeah. the way everything's set up. They're everywhere we, out here. Never heard of them. So you get in there and they're promoting all their beer everywhere, like BJ's, mm-hmm. everything. There's like 12 of them and uh, get seated at our table right away. And right on the placard on the table, it said like, try our collab with Lagunitas. And then red flag. <laughs> they they didn't have it on the menu. Uh, it's but I, I immediately thought, is that a real collab or does <laughs> Lagunitas just brew their beer and then they put the BJ's label on it. So I start thinking. So I Googled it. Uh, it said apparently BJ's does own six breweries throughout the country. They brew their own beer. So, Some of the restaurants have their own uh, brewing equipment. One of the ones yeah. out here actually brews their own beer to sustain themselves. So I, I found that uh, to be true. Right. So yeah. that's great. I ordered their pale to start out. Just a real classic malty, hoppy, piney, you know, everything you'd expect from a classic pale ale. Mm-hmm. Though I deleted the picture. I, I was going to send it to you. The lacing on the glass was like top notch. Oh, sexual. Like it was like a centerfold <laughs> were the <laughs> lacing on the glass. It was nice. It was great. The, 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 you know, like the beer wasn't special. Right. Like I said, it was classic. I did get their Pilsner after that and it wasn't great. Uh, so I was kind of bummed out on that. You know, it just wasn't like overly crisp and refreshing and, you know, no breadiness. It was still yeah. kind of like malty and I wasn't here for it. Sure. Um, the wings, on the other hand, I thoroughly enjoyed their wings. All right. I think I got a hot honey sauce and can't remember the other mm. one. The hot honey sauce wasn't very hot honey or, or hot or anything. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. It was the Nashville sauce. That one sucked. Oh. Uh, and then whatever That's stupid. I love hot and Nashville hot sauce. I know. I love Nashville hot. Yeah. It's, it's the best. But this one was just not great. You didn't by any uh, chance have the Jeremiah Red, did you? The beer? No, I did not. Okay. I, I haven't been to BJ's in many a year. But from what I remember, the Jeremiah, Jeremiah Red was pretty good. Here, I can look this up real quick. Well, while you look, I'll, I'll tell you two fun BJ's facts that kind of connect to our friends. Uh, one, Monica of Petals and Pints used to manage a BJ's restaurant. Okay. And then Chaz, the head brewer over at Malibu Brewing, got his start brewing at a BJ's under this guy, Dave, who's the head brewer now at Ladyface, which is the brewery that Malibu Brewing is buying to make their second location. That's crazy. Yeah, small world. Oh, yeah, the Piranha's Pale Ale. That was oh, the okay. I yeah, I remember that name. That was that that was a good pale ale, and maybe I did get the light switch lager or lighthouse lager, whatever the fuck it was called. But that one wasn't great. Mm. Yeah, I find their beers to be pretty meh for the most part. Well, yeah, and especially when you drink, you know, decent enough stuff every day, every weekend, every time you drink beer, like you know, we kind of do. And uh, but yeah, like I wasn't thoroughly disappointed with it. Sure, which is good. Yeah. Our service could have been better. They served us. Uh, they served my daughter frozen corn dogs. So that was the, like the worst part about it. Like they were still frozen? They were like cold. Yeah, like frozen cold on the inside. They were like warm on the outside, <laughs> but then cold to frozen on the inside. So then they just had to go fry some more up. But uh, Weird And they, and they didn't even take it off the receipt, which I thought was bizarre. Oh, that is a little shitty. Right? Like the guy even felt the inside of the mini corn dog. Yeah. And was like, oh, yeah, that is cold. So it's like, you usually take that off and you're like, oh, I'm so sorry about that. Right. Just, or or here's like a, a, you know, free dessert instead or Right. Something. Or just something to. Not that you're looking for free shit necessarily, but. Correct. Well, which is yeah, usually how it goes down. Hey, we're so that's sorry. Like, we're you're not looking to go out and get something served to you that's unedible. Right. You know, deadly. but. Hey, like, please, like, just a little, a little something, bud. Yeah. yeah. Weird. Not even, not even like a wink. <laughs> you know, half half a beer for daddy yeah, something <laughs> right but no so yeah i mean pj's uh, was fine i just you know was skeptical and yeah it's chainy but very chainy yeah if you're, if you're looking to get fat kid status you get a pizuki you know warm cookie cold ice cream it's delicious i did read that one on the menu we did not get one 
I was That's pretty good. full from the wings. Uh, they were pretty large. Yeah. They were not very, you know, like you when you get wings and they're like super chewy. Mm-hmm. These were not those wings. These were pretty uh, solid. Oh, good. Okay. So that's the best. Yeah. I would say there's like solid six out of 10. Yeah. Nice. Uh, oh, before I forget, shout out to Bellevue, Washington, our top listening city of last week. Weird. That's because you said Fremont on the episode. Maybe so. I wonder how Guaranteed. close they are. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> but I, no, no, that was Fremont, California that we were talking about. Well, yeah. But then we started talking about Fremont. Could have sort of started talking about. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we did. You know, I did a couple weeks ago have a Made West Fremont collab. That's maybe the that's what Andrew it was. Gave me. Yep. Yeah. Can't believe I just remembered that. So, um, anywho, yeah, good times. What else is going on? Any uh, any other research? Anything going on with you over there? Um, so it's fall to me because it's September. Mm, still hot as balls over here. Still, it's still pretty hot here. But we went and did some apple orchard picking today. Every year we it's like a summer thing or a fall thing we try and do every year. Fall because I said it's fall. Right. And. Uh, <laughs> The way the kids' school is working out now the next two months, and we got Disney coming up, and, mm. um, you know, I work every weekend, and it's just not right to take a, a day off just to go apple picking. So, Labor Day, happy Labor Day. Uh, happy Labor Day. Drove out to this place, Peck and Bushel. We've been going there three or four years now. Really, really nice facility. And uh, so we went out there, and we, we uh, picked some apples, picked some. Some River Bells and some Williams Pride and uh, some Sansas and uh, what is the Zest Stars were terrible. They were rotting on the trees. I'm assuming there was like last of the crop. So they're like, your, hey, your ability to name apples is impressive. Well, I, I just went today, so I remembered them. Right. And you're Not a produce guy. So, well, I used to be. Former. Yeah. Former. Uh, artist formerly known as. Uh, yes. So, yeah, it was a good time. The cool thing was, so they, they had this new building in the back. Because they have like this main building. It's where you buy your bag to fill the apples. Okay. Um, they have all like the apple cider donuts in there. You can get all these apple desserts and pastries, deconstructed caramel apples, uh, some shoppy stuff, whatever. So then on the back side where they have the orchards, they built this huge building and it has like lunchy stuff and sandwiches and sodas and beer. Okay. Now I'm in. So that was neat. I actually always said every year we went there, I always thought, I didn't say, I did think the one thing missing is beer. It's hot as balls. Mm -hmm. You're outside. Not a cloud in the sky. Yeah. 70 degree sun with not a cloud in the sky. Hot. It's hot. Yeah. And it's just baking on you. It, it's terrible. That beer hit so good. Mm. So good. Um, But yeah, so. We, we were talking a little before the show because I'm very old. Right. We, we, we we're both close to um, Canes and Walkers. At this yes. Point. I'm, I mean, I'm getting up there in yeah. age. I had to fix my lower back pillow before we recorded. <laughs> yes. And Your lumbar support. <laughs> yes. I, I got the bad lumbar. <laughs> <laughs> and, Doctor uh, says I need a backyotomy. Right. <laughs> you know, I said that line to somebody like three weeks ago and they didn't get it and it made me really sad. Oh, sorry about really that. Uh, so then, uh, getting old. So, you know, when you, you sleep really bad and you get like that, the kink in your neck, right? Oh, yeah. Well, I didn't sleep bad. I actually slept really well. <laughs> and then I went downstairs and I continued to feel well. And then I said, oh, hey, it's Monday. Let's work out because we work out on Mondays. That's what we do. And my workout was great. And guess what? Still p felt pretty good. Right? Okay. And then I went upstairs to shower. <laughs> Before we got ready to go apple picking, and I don't, I don't even know what happened. Can't turn my neck to the right. <laughs> I am doing <laughs> the full body turn at the waist just to look to the right. So we're driving, like not even driving yet. I'm pulling out of my driveway, backing out, and I'm trying to turn just to look, you know, just make sure nobody's there. And my hands are on the wheel, and I'm just completely turning my entire body <laughs> sideways to check. And, I, and and then we hit the freeway, Greg. <laughs> I've never felt so unsafe in my life on my own doing. <laughs> just trying to check my own blind spot. Yeah. You know, nothing like going 75 on the freeway and make sure nobody's in your blind spot. And you are completely looking backwards 
you know, who knows what's going on in front of me. I think my hands are in the same place on the wheel. <laughs> hey, I don't sweetie, know. Sweetie, daddy was... wants to play a little game. <laughs> yeah. Let, let's play the do you see any cars to my right game. Tell me when you see a car. <laughs> please. <laughs> For my life and especially yours, please tell me if you see a car. Um, Whenever I picture you turning without being able to move your head, I hear Dr. Evil going, duck, 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 duck. Yeah, I feel like if I, like, you want to do the robot, uh-huh. and then you, zzz, yeah, that's what I feel like. But yeah, it's terrible. It's terrible, man, getting old. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm sore for no reason. Uh, my knee is so fucked up right now. <laughs> like, that's what kills me is I, I don't even know what I did. Like, I was having a super solid morning. Yeah. And my, you're know, like, I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm just getting old. I've always had knee pains, like, my entire life. I've had knee issues. And the other day I said to my wife, I was like, this knee thing that I'm experiencing right now, I said, I'm a little worried. It's not like knee issues I've ever had before. She goes, we're well, going to go to the doctor. I was like, fuck no. Yeah, why crazy. would you do that? Yeah. <laughs> we got a wakeboarding trip next week uh, to go to. Hey, lady, gotta... I just need you to sit here and hear me complain yeah, about this. Just listen to me, bitch. Just listen. Yeah. I, what do you think? I want to do something about it? No. <laughs> I said, we got wakeboarding coming up. What am I going to do? Go to the doctor and he's going to say, hey, no activity. Like, okay, I'm not going wakeboarding this weekend or anything. Yeah. Oh, thanks for, thanks for ruining my weekend, doctor. Right. Yeah. It's like, uh, that's just a waste of money because I'm going wakeboarding. And then in a few weeks, we're going out of the country on a little trippy poo. And it's like, what am I going to do? Walk around with crutches? No, I might as well just wait till Christmas to get this looked at. Well, but then you're going to buy presents during Christmas. So you might as well wait till after Christmas. Yeah. Let's make it February. Yeah. You don't want to waste that money. Yeah. And by February, maybe it'll be better. Who knows? Well, February, you're going to be wanting to buy a bunch of tri-tips for Valentine's Day, so right, you're going to want to put that off then, so... Yeah, you can't work on your knee while you're buying a bunch of tri-tips for Valentine's Day. Yeah, so then yeah. maybe put it off for next summer, but then you're going to be wakeboarding all next summer. Right. So I'll figure it, it out. Yeah, just yeah, just complain about it. Yeah, we'll get to it. It's almost like that's like medicine, complaining about it. Yeah. Yeah, it makes it feel better. Yeah, I, I figure like I'll get my old knee brace out. I haven't needed that in a long time. I'll wear it while I'm wakeboarding. It'll be fine. Very stone cold Steve Austin of you. Yeah. Should I get the metal knees out? <laughs> yes. Start cracking more beers out on the wakeboard. It'd be good stuff. So, uh, all right. Enough about us being not an old person. Show. Not an old person. So yes. rapidly becoming one. <laughs> Every second uh, I'm getting older, man. Yeah. Let me tell you, the <laughs> joints don't work like they used to. Uh, but we did get a, a voicemail, like I said, from our homie beer girl, Mel. Let's see what she's calling it about. Leave a message after the tone. Hey, Greg. Hey, Flex. It's your beer girl, Melissa. And I am actually on my way up to my university to do some skill checks, but I'm listening to the current podcast that just came out today. It is Wednesday, 821. And I just want to let you guys know that you have a taco guy, but I have a guy literally for everything. So I think it's hilarious. Like, it is an Italian thing all the way, and obviously probably Hispanic thing as well. You always got a guy for everything you need. You need something for breakfast? We got a guy. You need a tire change? We got a guy. You need somebody off? You might have a guy. Depends. You know, you got to actually... That's a different story. But... <laughs> Taco guy, of course, he's going to do whatever you need because that's his business. The business is he's the guy that does everything you need. Anyway, I hope you guys are having a great week. I miss you. Get me on the podcast again. And I'm going to go back to listening to the current podcast. I literally stopped it just to say this. <laughs> Bye. Smooches, Mel. Love you. Okay, so two things. First, First off, it sounds like someone was farting in the background. Oh, I love how Italian she sounds yeah. when she starts talking like that. Yeah, I will uh, not fuck with her. Number two, the I got a guy thing. Right. My my father-in-law, he's like 100% Polish, just like an enormous Polak. When I met my wife, I started thinking this guy is like the head of the Polish mafia <laughs> because he may still be. He has got a guy for everything. You need new tires on your car? (laughs) He's got a guy. Your toilet's clogged? He's got a guy. You need to install a ceiling fan and you're mechanically inclined? He's got a guy. Just 
got a guy you need your house painted guess what he's got a yeah, guy got for it. that too so it's uh it, it was a running joke for quite some years that he was maybe is the leader of the polish mafia most likely yeah i i wouldn't put it past him you haven't been jumped in though yet right uh no i'm really hoping not to <laughs> like uh you ever see mickey blue eyes i'm trying to stay like out of that got it so just nice and easy yeah i, I don't want to get involved that makes sense I'm too messy pretty. too pretty yeah you are real pretty oh my gosh there don't want to fuck that up <laughs> uh all right well i got a guy who needs to drink a beer let's let's make that happen for him in a world where craft beer is king a world where muscles are bigger than growlers only one tongue can guide us one man one tongue one tongue jobber in this world we must find out what is flex drinking it's fall (laughs) y'all ish I'm not going to stop about that. I, I've been in fall mode for about three weeks now. Pumpkin spice. Um, not yet. Uh, but I've been on the Oktoberfest kick, right? Oh, yeah. So I've officially had eight Oktoberfests now. Okay. Doing the work. Doing the Lord's work. So let's see. Previously, two weeks ago, a week ago, a week ago, I had Line of Kugels. I had Sam Adams. I had New Glarus. I had Third Space. And I had... One other of them. It'll come to me. Mm-hmm. So upon that, I've had Raised Grain, which is a local brewery in a county away from me. Okay. I've had MKE Brewings. And today on the show, I'm drinking Eagle Park because uh, I stopped there and I picked it up because I needed it. Uh, MC Hammerschlagen. <laughs> That's pretty good. Oktoberfest style lager. And yes, uh, it does have an eagle in parachute pants. Fantastic. L- looking like it is doing the MC Hammer. That's a great can art. Um uh, their 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 can art's always phenomenal. It says it is a fest beer lagered for over thirty days. Uh because Budweiser's not the only one that does that. Is it Beachwood Age? <laughs> yeah, it's not Beachwood Age. <laughs> um, but lagered for thirty days with a deep gold color and subtle maltiness with a crisp finish. A great pairing to changing seasons here in Wisconsin. Uh, because it's an Oktoberfest, Untapped has it rated at a 377, mm. which we all know it's tr- it's trash. All imported German malt, German hops, and German yeast strain. Uh, it doesn't say specifics on any of those, but they went as German as possible to make the most German as possible beer. Makes sense. Yeah. So yeah. on the old sniffer, it is uh, wicked caramely, like super duper sweet caramely. Mm-hmm. Quite lovely, actually. Gold color also on it. It's very, funny. very appropriate. Gold right. and a little bit of caramel in there. Yeah, that's it. It's almost like uh, what I would call a caramel colored beer, Greg. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so then on the old uh, tongue jobber here. <laughs> By the way, I looked up tongue jobber in German. It's Zungen jobber. <laughs> All right. Well, on the old Zungen jobber. <laughs> that is fantastic. So it's low in carbonation. Um, I would call it light to medium bodied here. What I like about it, and this could be an unpopular opinion, Mm -hmm. it is not overly roasty or toasty. Oh, which is the fest beer. It should be pretty clean. Right. Um, But like sometimes you get those Oktoberfests and they are really punching you, uh, punching you in the palate with those overly roasted malts. Mm -hmm. And, um, this you just get a lot of that caramel flavor uh, and because of that low carbonation on it 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 goes down rather smoothly it's, it's terrific so if, if i was ranking these which i had been and line and kugels was at my top which it goes way back for me right this is, has to take the number one spot oh um and the raised grain i had had recently as well i think i had that last weekend uh, that actually got to the number two spot because I couldn't believe how good that was. I know, like, it's been knocked down to number three. But it, well, no, no. So it, it was number one. Oh, now it's number two. Got it. Now it's number two. Who does number two work for? <sighs> Bite your lip and give it hell. We're gonna get through this. <laughs> so here's here's the question for you in all your Oktoberfests okay. uh, research. 
This is probably the first fest beer you've come across that's labeled an Oktoberfest, right? Well, so see, here's the deal. On the can, it should on, be the front, a Marzen. on the front of the can, it says Oktoberfest style beer, or lager. I'm sorry. And uh, then it calls itself a fest beer in the description. Mm. So, I don't know. I, I don't know the <laughs> specifications here. Because I looked it up just to make sure I was correct, and I was. A Marzen is a little darker, a little richer, a little heavier. Right. And has a little more alcohol. So fest beer is, you know, the cleaner. Well, this one hits at five nine. Yeah, so it's right in is, there. It's just under the appropriate six percent of a Mertzen. Mertzen, which goes five one to six percent. Yeah. So, anyways, nerd shit. So maybe it's not, uh, you know, maybe it is just the classic Oktoberfest style. Maybe, yeah, maybe so. And this is for um, everyone out there wanting to know how to say Zungenjober. Zungenjober. There you have it. That's what Google Translate. Nailed. Zungen Jabba. Zungen Jabba. So hard. So hard right now. <laughs> Let me tell you. Save Ho- that for a Hopefully, drop. everybody busts out their Zungen Jabba <laughs> in the next couple weeks <laughs> and sprays their fest beer everywhere. Yeah, get on, get on those Oktoberfests with their Zungen Jabba. That's right. <laughs> uh, before we move on to news, one man, one <laughs> Zungen Jabba. <laughs> Or what is it? Uh, un, not un. Uns? What's one in German? Un. Is it? Oh, Eiswein Tri. Eis Zungenjabber. <laughs> Maybe we should have uh, Google Translate do the whole thing for us. In all German show. In all German, yeah. <laughs> Very robotic. Uh, before we get on to news, I want to make sure and give a shout out to Jeff over at Wondercorn. Jeff hit me up on the gram the other day, was like, hey, uh, I like your shit. You guys obviously are into beer. We are making that. We're this new company that's making snacks to be had with beer. Can I send you some? I'm like, I mean, Pope shit in the woods. Like sure. wonder corn, wonder corn uh, on the gram. Wonder underscore corn, wonder corn snacks.com. Anyways, it's corn shocking that has like flavors on it. And instead of being like a corn nut where it's, you know, like crunchy all the way through, Whatever he does, like he just like fry, flash fries it or some shit. It's crunchy on the outside. It is soft on the inside. It's I've never had anything like it. It's interesting. Erica, I'm not cheating on you. Necknosh is still the best beer snack due to its portability <laughs> and accessory fashion accessoriness. But a uh, huge shout out and thank you to Jeff for sending over some of that wonder corn. And they're local out here. They're Ventura County Company, which I was like, yeah, man, let's let's support local. So send them would, on over. Would you say it? Wunderkorn. <laughs> That's exactly what I would say. <laughs> so, we haven't had all of them yet so far. Of the ones we've had, sea salt and vinegar is the jam. So Okay. I do like salt and vinegar. Yeah. It's it's pretty good. So uh, so thanks to Jeff. Wunderkorn. Go go check him out on the gram or wundercornsnacks.com. I swear they're not sponsored. He just hooked it up. And I told him, I was like, hey, man, if it's good, I'll, I'll mention it on the show. And it was good. So okay. here I am mentioning on the show. So thanks for thanks for the hookup. Wunderkorn with their Zungenjaller. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to go on oh, for all of gonna, Oktoberfest. It's not going to stop. All of Oktoberfest. Maybe Nine. Even to, maybe even to Halloween. Das Halloween. <laughs> for no reason. Uh, all right. A little news before we get on out of, get on up out of here. Those are hard words to say. Uh, thanks to Scott for sending this story over. A woman was taken to a hospital and needed several stitches after being struck with a flying beer can during a promotional event for Hulk Hogan's new beer brand. Amazing. <laughs> the incident, I mean, I'm sorry, lady, but this is so fucking great because Hulk is such an ass clown these days. He really is. He really is. They also, I, I watched, I looked this up further to get like more information on it. And I found a news story, a local news story. And it was like the video from the newscast. And apparently before the incident happened, he was up on stage and dropped a couple of racial references again. I was like, oh God, Hulk, just, just get out while you can, dude. Any hoozle. The incident happened a couple weeks ago while former wrestling star was on a tour of Northeast Ohio promoting his real American beer brand. According to a Medina Township Police Department incident report, officers were, officers were called to the Thirsty Cowboy 
on Medina oh. Road. Yeah. <laughs> Just before 5.30 p.m. Sounds very ohio Right. The, come on down to the thirsty cowboy. Uh, we're immediately notified by the victim's daughter that her 50-year-old mother had been hit in the head with a beer thrown from the stage and that she was bleeding. Officers made contact with the 50-year-old. Why do they keep reiterating that she's 50? And found her holding her head with a towel pressed to the wound. The woman told police she turned her head and dropped to the floor when the beer hit her. According to the police report, witnesses first told police that the beer that hit the woman was thrown by Hogan himself, but other witnesses later told them it was a different crew member who was throwing beers from the stage like a baseball pitch, in quotes, instead of tossing them. Wow. (laughs) Just fucking beaming them into the crowd. Blasting them. Yeah. Due to conflicting information from numerous patrons, it is unclear who threw the beer that injured the woman, the report reads. Police said there was an excessive amount of people at the bar. The woman's husband applied pressure and iced the wound until paramedics arrived and her husband drove her to a Medina hospital for treatment. The woman's daughter told police that her mother received nine stitches in her head near her hairline and that the family was watching for concussion symptoms. Wait, wait, wait. Near her hairline? Mm-hmm. I'm, no, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> I know where you're going. Sounds like she <laughs> bladed herself. It does sound like she pulled the old dusty roads. Uh, She also clarified that they were still unsure of who threw the beer that injured her mother, but they reached out to a lawyer in hopes of obtaining closed circuit television footage that could shed more light on the incident. Why are we still calling it closed circuit television? It's fucking security cameras, people. But uh, (laughs) but yeah. Like they actually had a cameraman there. (laughs) So weird. That's such an 80s term. Uh, But yeah, brother, maybe you should watch where you're fucking throwing those cans. Yeah, or tell your crew not to Toss them like Jagoff. You're <laughs> that's <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah, doing their best fucking pitcher impression out there. What an idiot. Uh, haven't they ever watched Stone Cold drink beers in the ring? No one fucking beams them to Stone Cold. They toss them high. Like, yeah, you're and he lobbing catches them. them in the air. Lobbing yeah. them, idiots. Uh, good news for New York residents. New York governor passes direct to consumer shipping for hard cider and spirits. Governor Kathy Hochul, Hochul signed Senate Bill. Of Cess two a two five a blah 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 into law allowing direct to consumer shipping from in and out of state manufacturers. The new law will go into effect ninety days after signature, just in time for the upcoming holiday season. The New York Cider Association said in a press release, cider and spirits producers were temporarily allowed to ship DTC during the COVID nineteen pandemic, but those allowances ended when pandemic related executive orders expired. Wine producers have been able to ship DTC to New York residents since two thousand five. Beer DTC shipping is not permitted. How can you send cider but not beer? Yeah, that doesn't make sense. I call horse shit. But also, uh, any baby step forward is a... Yeah. Baby thing. steps to overturn these archaic Budweiser post-prohibition laws. Anything we can do. And New York is one of those shitty states, too. Because I know Mel, with the whole beer world thing... Right. She said they're one of the worst states to bring in or take out of. Oh, I could see that. So that, uh, you know, like I said, any any step moving forward and laying, you know, letting go of these laws, that's super solid. Yeah. California is surprisingly good about that kind of stuff and allowing well, it to happen. good. Yeah. For all, for all of the complaints that people have about California, we're pretty alcohol friendly out here. So come on over and get hammered with us. Uh, New Belgium finds a buyer for Magnolia Brewing. The San Francisco-based Magnolia Brewing is changing hands once again. Kieran owned Little, excuse me, Kieran owned Lion Little World Beverages, acquired the brewery as part of the 2019 acquisition of New Belgium. A terrible name. I know. In 2017, New Belgium had partnered with Dick Cantwell and Oud Beers. <laughs> Dick, yeah, that's totally a poor name. <laughs> uh, to acquire the brewery for $2.7 million as part of a 2017 bankruptcy process. Kieran's U.S. operations, now known as New Belgium Brewing, how creative, began planning a divestment of Magnolia in February. The company secured a buyer on August 13th. The new ownership group includes uh, Brandon Phillips of 21st Amendment, neighborhood bar owner Kevin Kinoke, and Brian Rakow from consulting firm The Specialistas, who helped guide the brewery through its bankruptcy. Um So, yeah, there you go. You you need a guy in on the streets. That that was great. Yeah. They got a guy. Yeah. Yeah. You just 
Get the guy on the street, he'll he'll get you places. Yeah, yeah he, knows, he knows he knows what's going on. That's true. You, you just always need a guy for something. <laughs> that's what we've learned. On the this local show. bar manager. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. It's so nondescript. Neighborhood bar owner. Yeah, Kevin. <laughs> It, it feels very like, hey guys, I got like 300 bucks in savings. Who wants to go in on this? <laughs> right. Or like they just, they needed somebody else, like a man of the people. Like, <laughs> yeah. Hey, we we got to make this think like it was like a, like the little guy won kind of thing. Right. Well, it's like when Magic Johnson bought the Dodgers, I think he's like the lowest percentage stakeholder of the Dodgers, <laughs> but you know, he's the face they put out there because LA loves magic. Right. They do. So it's, you know, it's all, it's all about the optics. All right. We'll end it with this one. Sapporo slash stone. I guess they're just Sapporo stone now, aren't they? Workers start a union drive in Virginia. Sapporo stone workers in Virginia have begun a union drive. Workers at a Sapporo stone Richmond facility are seeking higher pay, more consistent scheduling and better working conditions per the report. Last Monday afternoon, an organizer with the International Brotherhood of Teamsters, Local 322, delivered a request for recognition to Joel Pittman, Sapporo Stone VP of Brewing Operations. The proposed bargaining unit includes 90 work- workers, including brewery workers, maintenance warehouse, and hospitality workers. A Sapporo Stone spokesperson, easy for me to say, shared the following statement with Brewbound. Today, we are approached by the Teamsters regarding potential unionization of our RVA team. We respect the right of our team members to choose or not to choose, had to get that in there, whether they want to be represented by a union. We agree with our team members' desire for the best possible workplace, and we believe this is the best, and we believe this is best accomplished without a union. Taking care of our team is our number one priority. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. They're probably just like, well, we need 90 new workers. <laughs> wonder if Kevin, the local bar owner, has any. He's <laughs> a real stand-up guy. <laughs> hey, he knows some guys. He's, he's got a guy for everything. <laughs> oh, fuck. Guys got to have a guy. Can't need one. Yeah, you just need guys. So, anywho, that's it. Let's, uh, let's wrap things up over here. I'm going to say hi to Vanessa. Hi, Vanessa. Hello, hello. Follow us on the socials at Craft Beer Republic at Flex Me a Beer underscores in between. Uh, shout out again to Jeff from Wondercorn as well as Andrew from Ventura County Beer. Thanks, everybody. Uh, CraftBeerRepublic.com. Mail at CraftBeerRepublic.com. 805-53-BEER. It's 2337. I think that's everything. Hope everyone out there is staying very well hydrated. And on that note, good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.